we haven't had a proper sit down face to face little chat on the vlogs in a while so I thought I'd just pop in to give you a bit of an update. I would normally do a kind of look ahead to the month video and I just haven't had the time to do that so this is kind of that but in the middle of July. Um, it's not a good day for me. I may look slightly dishevelled and a little weary and that is because today in the UK I'm filming it is Sunday the 18th of July it's going to be 31 degrees Celsius here today <sighs> we have no air conditioning uh, or anything like that we've just put up a frame pool at the bottom of the garden it's not deep enough to swim but it's big enough that we could all just sit in it and sizzle <laughs> But yeah, I'm not looking forward to today. It's still the morning, uh, so the sun hasn't come around to this side of the house. So I thought I would film this now before I'm too hot and bothered to do anything. So we're going to start with a little walk. So I filmed a walk. Uh, I go once or twice a week. I walk to the post office in town uh, to deliver orders for my Etsy shop. And I took the opportunity to film that earlier in the week and have a little chat with you about... Um, nature and some musings on coping with the warmer months uh, of July and August. So I'm going to show you that now and then I'm just going to give you a little update on some just stuff that I've spoken about before. Um, yeah, so I will hand over to me walking to the post office. So I'm taking you with me on my regular walk to the post office. First we're going to cross the motorway. Uh, this is the A2, it's the main motorway that runs from Kent into London. I've jumped forward a bit here so the barrier whizzing past on the left doesn't make you feel dizzy. Uh, I walk along the edge of a big heathland which is an area characterised by open and low growing vegetation. But our local heath has oh, a myriad of habitats. It's got ponds, woodland, uh, acid grassland, uh, heathland, sandy soil. Um, it's a designated area of outstanding natural beauty. We're very, very lucky to have it on our doorstep. So one of the things I found incredibly useful to help me cope with summer and the low mood that I suffer from in the lighter and warmer months, summer SAD, summer seasonal affective disorder, is to learn more about the flora and fauna in my local area. And as you can see, there's lots of it. You can see here the verges are absolutely bursting with all kinds of wild plants. And learning their names and teaching myself to try and identify at least some of them has been an unexpected source of joy. So coming up here on the left hand side, these very blousy looking white flowers, I looked them up and they're actually hedge bindweed. They're very invasive, but they are very pretty. We're coming past the car park for the heath here. This is where everyone comes to park when they're walking their dogs. Uh, I'm gonna cut the film in a second so that I don't end up filming the lady with her dogs, making her feel uncomfortable. I have a choice here. I can take the path to the right, which will take me along the edge of the heath on quite a wide path next to the road. Or I can cut through here, which is what I'm doing, and enjoy a little bit of a more solitary walk and enjoy the view and the plants. Except in a minute I don't enjoy it. I just got stung and it hurt. Ouchie. I think this is scotch broom. It won't bloom until the autumn and it will smell of vanilla when it does, if I'm right. And I think this is mugwort. And I think this is cow 
parsnip, not parsley, but it also looks like hemlock. Now, yellow is my favourite colour and there are so many yellow flowers to learn. This is wild lettuce. This is St John's wort, or a common St John's wort. And this is hawksbeard, or it could be hawkbit. And it also looks similar to a dandelion. <laughs> You can see here how narrow the path gets in parts. It's quite muddy as well at the moment because we've had a lot of rain. This is common yarrow. Very pretty. I'm using my new GoPro camera to film this. Uh, so hopefully you're getting a nice, a sense that we're walking, but a quite a nice steady shot. So you can get a good look at what it is to walk to the post office. <laughs> blackberry flowers so we'll know where to come back in, at the end of summer to collect our blackberries I have no idea what this is, but it's kind of pretty. Another yellow one. This is short pod mustard. And I'm going to come out onto the, the main road now to start to head into town. So we start to see a lot more litter and towniness here. Um, I'm still managing to spot flowers though. More blackberry, I think. That great metal box on the right hand side that you can see there is Dunnell Mill, where I got my new rug. I really like it when there's trees that overhang but they're still high enough that you can walk underneath them This bit coming up here is one of my favourite parts of the walk to the post office. It's a fallen sort of half broken branch from a tree that's connecting with a tree that's growing up on the pavement and they form a tunnel. It's been like this for months. So you get to walk through this little leafy tunnel every time you walk through the, down the pavement. I really hope that they decide to just leave it like that. It's so cool. <laughs> you enjoyed that little stroll into town I really do enjoy that walk um, it's something I've come to really really look forward to I'll listen to a podcast or an audiobook as I walk and I stop all the time to try and identify flowers and and so on and what I would really like to do is start to draw some of the species of wild flower and plant that I come across because I find that if I concentrate on one particular plant and learn its name that's fine, but if I can sort of draw it and really study it properly, it really helps sort of cement it in my mind. So I'd like to start trying to draw some of them. Not that I have 
the skills to be able to do that, but I'd like to be able to draw them in my own way. So I'm just looking over there because I've just noticed a mark on the newly painted wall. So I'm going to have to go and paint over that. So I just wanted to update you on a few things that I would normally talk about every month. Um, one of the things I've mentioned every month so far this year is my little book, which I use to track things. And it's slightly different this month in that I'm going to say that I have stopped tracking. So in May, the last time I did it was in May. And at the end of May, I decided I would take June off because it was becoming a to-do on my list. So I was tracking, I just had a really simple tracker where I was tracking how much sleep I was getting, the water I was drinking, uh, whether I was having five a day, alcohol-free days, my mood, anxiety, and whether I was getting to bed at a reasonable time. And then we just entered a period of our year where things are just manic. It's towards the end of term, there are exams going on, clubs are starting, like the girls sort of after school clubs are starting to start up again, and life just got so busy that doing this every day was becoming a chore. And that was never what it was going to be about. Also, at the same time, I started to track my um, water and food on an app on my phone. This isn't sponsored, this is just an app I happen to find. It's called NutriCheck and I wanted to lose a bit of weight that I put on over the lockdown and I started tracking it on there to help me do that. I've lost a stone, which is all I wanted to lose. So it was a very successful exercise. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the app, but because I was tracking all my food and my water and my sugar and everything on there, I didn't feel the need to track things twice. So that was one of the reasons I stopped doing it. And I haven't really missed it. And I really enjoyed it for the first part of the year. I found it extremely helpful. But at this point, I don't feel I need it. So I've stopped doing that. I am, however, still tracking books. So I've got my little picture here. It's a bit out of date. I need to update it. So whenever I finish a book, I write it in my little virtual library here and give it stars. So I've got to finish my little drawing of the salt path. I've since finished Valley of the Horses by uh, Jean M. Owl, who wrote also Can of the Cave Bear, um, and I've started now on My Sister the Serial Killer, so I need to add that to my list. So I'm still very much enjoying tracking my books, it's something I'm going to definitely keep doing um, because I realised recently I went for a, a little trip to Waterstones with a friend, and there were all these books, and we were like, Oh my goodness, have you read this one? Oh, I remember this book, and I remember I realised I have no record anywhere of the books that I've read over my life. And sometimes I look at a book and think, have I read that? And I have to read the blurb to remind myself whether I've actually read that book. So I would, yeah, I'm going to find the act of tracking the books I read throughout the year incredibly useful this year and in years to come. I'm also still um, tracking the year with my lovely book, which you can't see because it's got a beautiful cover on it that was embroidered for me by my friend Gaina, who has the Tales from Cuckoo Land channel. Here on YouTube, she, she did me this beautiful linen cover. But the book is Everyday Nature by Andy Beer. It has beautiful illustrations um, throughout and it has a little fact or story about nature for every single day of the year. And this has been a real joy and I'm still enjoying this. Sometimes I let myself get a bit behind so I can sit and catch up in little chunks and sort of binge read it. So I'm still absolutely loving this. I also wanted to give you a small update on the garden because back in June, June or May, I think I was talking about our um, ooh, fringe issues. Uh, we we're talking about all the plans I had for planting this year. And to be honest, they haven't all come to fruition. We haven't had a very successful gardening year, not as successful as last year, possibly because we've had less time because we're not really in a full lockdown anymore. Um, we had quite grand plans, but we've got some tomatoes on the go, but they're definitely not as far on as they were this time last year because we planted them a bit later and we haven't had as much um, sun, which is fine by me. Um, but we have got them on the go. I planted two cucumber plants, but one of them got munched by snails. But we do have one on the go, so hopefully that will be successful. I've never really had much success with cucumbers. They always end up with powdery mildew, uh, but it seems quite happy at the moment. Our raspberries this year are very happy. I've had that raspberry plant for years, and this is the first year it's really gone bonkers with raspberries. So I need to just make sure I look after that so it stays happy. 
we grew radishes which were really successful but once they're grown that's it <laughs> i was only growing them in pots so really in order to have radishes throughout the year i would have had to keep planting them and so on and i, I don't have the time for that uh, spring onions are growing successfully that they won't be ready for a while and we have cut and come again lettuce which again this year has been uh, is brilliant I, I i will do that every year I did it last year for the first time and it was just fantastic to be able to go out and cut lettuce leaves. Even our sunflowers didn't thrive this year. I planted them all out and they just died. Oh well. We've also got rid of the huge trampoline that was in our garden and replaced it with a swing. That's another hugely successful garden thing that we've, been, that we've done and uh, we've been prepping to get ready for our chickens arriving in August. Our coop is not here yet though, it got held up in the, the hold up in the Suez Canal. It is now in England waiting to come through customs but we're hoping it does actually arrive before we pick up our chickens. But I will be sharing our chicken journey with you here with some chicken flavoured vlogs. Right, I've got a couple of extra bits I wanted to share with you. The first one is I've got a discount code for you. So my friend Lily has opened an Etsy shop and I ordered a couple of bits from her. She's selling cards and prints of her artwork. And I haven't actually unwrapped my order yet because it was so pretty when it arrived. This is how it all looks. I'm gonna put the name of her shop on the screen. And she's given us a 50, look, can you see how sweaty my hands are? <laughs> I'm so hot and miserable. I hate this so much. It's like 11 o'clock in the morning. The sun hasn't even fully come round to hit the house and I am sweating. After this, I'm gonna put a swimming costume on and go and jump in the pool. What was I saying? Oh yes, so I haven't even unwrapped it yet because it just looks so pretty. So I'm gonna unwrap it now and show you. So her Etsy shop is on the screen and she's given us a 15% discount code with the code drop, drops of wonderful. And that code is going to last for the rest of the year. So make sure you go and take advantage. 15 cents a lot. So these are the ones I've ordered. I've ordered a little card with her designs on. And I ordered some gift tags as well. And I, I ordered the ones which are all different. You can order them all in one colour. Or you can get an assortment. So I went for an assortment. This is the rainbow one. That's the pink one. Blue. Green. I'm back to rainbow. <laughs> so I'm really, really chuffed with those. I'm looking forward to wrapping up all my uh, little gifts at Christmas and using my tags. And all the details will be in the description box underneath as well if you're interested in getting a bit of a bargain. Also, I wanted to tell you about a video that I watched. Um, I've mentioned this uh, YouTuber before. She's called Simple Joys, and I will link her channel underneath. And I recently watched another one of her videos um, and it was called The Only Way, oh no, sorry, it was called Slow Living for Distracted Minds, How I Am So Present. And it was just a really lovely book. She's a very good filmmaker. Um, I can never understand why she doesn't have more views or subscribers because what she does really, really good quality videos. She really knows what she's doing with the camera. Uh, and it was just really interesting and I found it really helpful to watch and there was a few points that she made um, that I found very useful as someone who lives a lot um, with anxiety and often feels like I don't know where I ought to be <laughs> in life. I found it a very useful video. So I'm gonna link that video underneath in case um, you might enjoy it. Uh, and just her channel generally is a very positive, happy channel. And we can all do with positive and happy, couldn't we? Okay, I'm gonna stop waffling now. Leave you with a little bit more footage uh, from the garden and from nature and a little bit of uh, footage of when we were putting up the pool yesterday and maybe a little bit of footage of us jumping into the pool now. <laughs> I'm going to go and get a very cold drink. Um, I will be back next week with a vlog about a walk that Dan and I did from Margate round the coast to Ramsgate. It was an a, over a nine mile walk that we did. It was absolutely stunning. I filmed the whole thing. Um, I haven't yet put it together but I'm hoping to have a really fantastic vlog for you about that entire walk. Um, so look out for that next week. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again very soon. The one at that end needs to go over to the bit with a D on it.